All right, Josh, today we're going to talk about absolute value equations and inequalities. I'm hopeful that uh, you'll be able to hear me. This is the first time I've ever done video on this laptop, and it's not the highest quality laptop that's ever been invented, so apparently the mic is a little bit off, but we'll see. Hopefully it'll still work out fine. Uh, when we talk about absolute value, we're talking about numbers or variable terms or whatever that are inside these two sets of straight lines. Now, in your mind, you're going to have to think that those are straight lines, even though you can obviously see that they're wavy. But I am incapable of making straight lines, and I just wanted to get this for you, uh, made for you before I ran out of time to do it. So I apologize for not having exactly straight lines, but just think of it in terms of straight lines. Now, we may have mentioned before, I think we've talked about this a little bit, that absolute value really is kind of how a car thinks. A car can only drive one direction, it can drive another direction, but it has no idea how far it's actually gone. So it might be a good analysis to start thinking of absolute value as how cars think. Now a car can go, say for instance, then in my little drawing here, from here to here is one half of a mile, which will make this car really long, but it's not for scale. I could drive the car from here to here, and that would be half a mile. I could also drive the car from here to here, and that would be half a mile as well. Now, we're not talking about specifically direction, we're only talking about distance. Cars can't tell what direction they go in. The GPS system in your car might be able to tell you what direction you're going in, but as far as the mechanics of a car is concerned, it can't tell you that it's going left or right or east or west or whatever. A car can only think in absolute value terms. Now, what that means is, I could be going this way for half, or I could be going this way for half. It would be very difficult to give directions if I only told you that it's half a mile. I do have to tell you in what direction. Mathematically, when we talk about um, direction, we're specifically are referring to positives and negatives. A negative, for instance, do a little number line down here real fast. Now, if I'm talking about the absolute value of 7, I may mean go east. So I'll start here, and I'll drive all the way up here. And that is me going 7. You'll use the hood of the car as a reference there. So that means I'm going 7 to the east. So the absolute value of 7 is certainly 7 in mathematical terms. I could also drive the car in the west direction, starting at the exact same spot, actually. Obviously, this isn't drawn to scale, because negatives are harder to draw than uh, positive. So I'm going to start here, which is the same basic starting spot, and I'm going the exact same distance of 7. But instead of going in the east direction, going this way, I'm going to the west. But the s amount of spaces that the car had to move is exactly the same. So the absolute value of 7 is not just 7, it's also negative 7. I could have two of those answers. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. Just because just because it went 5 miles, or 5 half miles, which would be 2 and a half miles, um, to the west, doesn't mean it didn't go 5 miles. So when you think about absolute value, I want you to start thinking about how a car would view the problem. Like, it doesn't know east or west. So what we're going to do today, or where we're going to head from here, is learning to solve equations using this information. The first thing we're going to do is think about the fact that this problem, once I draw my line, which is always the first step, has both an absolute value and a regular integer term on the same side of the line. In order to solve this type of problem, we have to get whatever is with the car away from it. So I've got my car here. It's in the x situation. But I've also got this plus 5. So I want to get the car or the uh, absolute value by itself. So normal subtract 5. Those cancel. 11 minus 5 gives me 6. And then if I ask the car how far it drove and it went 6 this way or 6 this way, it would tell me that it's 6. So what I'm going to do when I get a single x just by itself and a number, my answer is going to be that I went positive 6, or I could have also gone negative 6, because the car can only tell you, hey, I went 
six miles. I can't say that it went six east or six west. You'll have to talk to the GPS about that, but the car and the GPS rarely interact. Now for this problem, we have the uh, variable uh, term 2p plus 5, and it's all inside these absolute value sticks, straight up and down. So it's all absolute value. So in this case, the car represents the absolute value, so it goes 11 miles. Now the car does not know whether it goes 11 miles east or it goes 11 miles west, so we're going to have to adjust for both situations if we want to find possible values of p. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my car and drive it over here. This problem would be if the car told me it went 11 miles and it went east. So we just keep it exactly the same except you take the absolute value away. This car drives to the west, and since it drove west on a number line, that would make this negative 11. So all I have to do now is solve both of these and find the values. Draw your line, there's no baby goes to the bathroom, the rooms are clean, so we're going to cross the line. Negative 16, bring these cancel, bring down 2p. These cancel is equal to negative 8. So this is the answer if I went in the west direction, or negative. For this one, solve it the same way. Oh, whoops. I lost my head there for a second. I'm going to divide by 2 to get rid of this 2. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, so my answers for this are going to be 3 and negative 8. So put them both together in this little group. You probably want to put the negative 8 first, but it really doesn't matter. You can sort of figure it out from there. But just make sure that you do 1 in the east direction, or positive, which is essentially writing down the problem with that absolute value here and then you want to go over here, always keep the car the same. Anything inside that absolute value is the car, so you don't want to change that. You want to change its message. So it says it's equal to negative or to 11, but it can also be equal to negative 11. And then you'll work it out and divide and that whole thing. You're good to go. So P is equal to negative 8 or P is equal to 3. What happens, raise that one, if we have a situation where we have an inequality? This is n minus 1. Uh, the, the absolute value of n minus 1 is less than 3. Let's talk about our car analogy a little more. Here we've got our car, but we're going to make this in reference to this ice cream shop right up here. If I'm going, I think we have our distances measured out nicely, so we're going to keep those at half or what have you. But, we're going to, but I want you to think about the fact that if you were driving this car and you're going the whole length of the street, which is half a mile, so here to here, so I go in, but the ice cream shop is on my left. So I went half a mile, and that ice cream shop is on my left. So essentially I went plus one half and then it went on the left. If I'm driving a half mile the other way, I'm changing the whole perspective of the car. So this goes in a completely different direction. So not only Am I going negative one half, or one half of a mile to the west? I'm also changing the perspective. So now that ice cream shop is on my right, where before it was on my left. So what that does to an inequality is not only do you change the sign, you also flip the inequality. Because as you can see, the left versus right. I'll move this up a little closer so we can see it better the left versus right, this part shows that the, the number or the integer changes. This indicates that I'm going to flip that inequality because I changed my perspective. Now it's on the right side. If I told you to drive half a mile depending on where I start and I said it was on the left, you know to go here. If I told you it was on the left and you're facing this way, you're never going to see it. Or you might see it but then be angered by the fact that my directions were unclear. So that's what it looks like for this problem n minus 1, so I've got the car here, but remember I have to think about, well the car can only tell me it went 3 miles, so I'm going to drive the car over here, and then I'm going to keep all this information the same, everything works out just like that. On the flip side of it, I've got the car going to the west, so I'm going to 
not only keep this the same, I'm also going to change this to negative 3. But because the perspective changed, it used to say that it was less than. But this will change my entire perspective, so instead of being on the left, it's on the right. So this inequality changes as well. So the first one that we did, the one that goes east, looks exactly like my picture, except I don't have the absolute value. On the other side of it, it's the exact same thing inside. You want to keep that car the same. But then I change both the sign and flip the inequality. Now I can solve. And I end up as n is greater than negative 2 and n is less than 4. If I were to graph this, I'd go to negative 2 and 4 and make circle. Both of them stay unfilled because there's no line underneath. So these stay unfilled. n greater than negative 2 goes this way n less than 4 goes this way, so it's a barbell. And the way I would write it in a long problem is I want to put this at this end, and I put n just like that. Works perfect. So I start thinking like a car. We've got um, two more to go, and then we're all done. The absolute value of v minus 3 is greater than or equal to 4. I've got my car, it represents everything inside that inequality, or the absolute value sign. I'm going to drive it over here, and I'm going to treat it exactly the same as I would if the absolute value did not exist. So this is if the car and I are on the same perspective about what's positive or what's negative. Now if the car goes to the west, it doesn't know, so it's going to write down V minus 3, because this car stays the same. But then I have to change the direction and because the store is on the other side, it changes the inequality. Solve this. Solve this one. Now this is v is less than or equal to negative 1. This is v is greater than or equal to 7. So I'm going to draw my little line make a few lines here, circle where my numbers are. Now, as you can see, this is a greater than equal to, so I'm going to fill this in, as is this, I'm going to fill this one in too. Now, I read it from the side of the variable, so this is v is next to the smaller end, so v is less than negative 1. Smaller numbers go this way, or negative numbers that are more negative little arrow drawing thing works here because the variable is in the front, but I'd rather you think about it's less than. In this case, v is greater than 7, so numbers that are greater than 7, 8, 9, 10, so it's going to go up. So that's what that looks like. Uh, the final answer, v is less than or equal to negative 1, or v is greater than or equal to 7. So that's how that one's done. Let's do one more, and then we're finished. This one's a little bigger. This is kind of where it's going. The absolute value of 3x plus 5 is less than or equal to 14. Now, um, same thing. You see the absolute value. It looks just like a road, so we're going to put the car there. It drives off to the east, so I do 3x plus 5. And we're going to keep all that information the same. The car told me a legitimate information, or gave me legitimate information, so I'm just going to go with that. Assuming that he got it backwards, because he can't tell the direction. He drives over here, I rewrite as him, and change his story from positive 14 to negative, and because that store is on the opposite side, I'm going to flip that inequality over. Just like that. Now, there's simple two-step equations. No need to, uh, baby goes to the bathroom, no need to clean your room, it's just crossing the line steps at this point. Subtract 5, this gives me negative 19, bring down 3x, divide by 3, this part you're really good at, so I don't feel like I need to patronize you by standing there and making you do it. Negative 19 over 3 comes out to be 6, negative 6 and 1 third. That's negative 6 and 1 third. This one, 9. Cancel. 
So x is greater than negative 6 and 1 third. So say this is negative 6, my circle is going to be somewhere in this area. It's greater than or equal to, so I fill it in. It goes all the way up. There's 0, here's 3. This circle as it fills in, x is less than 3. So it's right in this general area where we're trying to head to that. And the final answer, because we make the nice little barbell, is negative 6 and 1 third is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. I should say that I'd like, I'm going to add something real fast to this that I hadn't thought of before, but at times it can be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to throw one in real fast. So this is me making one up on the fly to show you every possible situation so you're not weirded out by anything at any point. I'm not a huge fan of a fraction, so we're just going to treat it like this. Now, this is negative 2x plus 6 is greater than 2. Now you have to treat it like a car. Anything inside, he goes east. We write down the car, 2x plus 6, or the absolute value. Remember, these should be straight up and down and not any sort of angular part to it, otherwise they're parentheses. Negative 2x plus 6 is greater than 2. And then if the car goes the other way, remember that negative 2x plus 6, this becomes negative 2, and the inequality flips over. And then you solve them, which I'm sure you figured out pretty early on. The key to this problem is this very next step. In the very last step, we're going to divide by negative 2. Please remember that when this number is negative, you're going to flip the inequality over. So what used to be less than is now greater than. The reason I wanted to show you this is because not only did you have to flip it here, you re-flip it back when you get down to this step. But as you'll see in the next one, when we do the other side, you're going to flip it too. So everything's kept in similar relationship. It's kind of like whatever you're trying to explain to them is across the street as opposed to on the same side. See, we divided by a negative here, so this is going to flip over. It used to be like, kind of like this, and now it's going to go in this direction. Brought back the old uh, alligator thing. So I did minus 6, I got negative 4, divided by negative 2. On this side, I'm subtracting 6 from negative 2 and that whole thing. So it says x is greater than 4 and x is less than 2. Here's 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to circle. They stay unfilled because there's no line underneath. X greater than 4 goes up. X less than 2 goes down. The end. That's all you really have to do. Just remember when you have absolute values, to look for your straight lines. Think like your car. Go east. Go west. And if you go east, just treat the problem just like you would if the absolute values weren't even there. Because that's how a car would do the problem. But if it's this way, you're going to have to adjust for the fact that it's a car thinking and not you. So uh, change the sign in front of the number that's by itself or the integer. If there's an inequality when you do the west version or the negative version, you want to make sure you flip that inequality before you solve. And that's it.